Hey, it's Noel Powell with CreationEffects.com. The iPhone 15 just came out recently, and uh, I don't know about the phone, but if you're like me, you got real excited when you saw this shiny, glittery title that they used in the promos, and I just love it. I was drawn to it immediately. It's so pretty and glittery, and it just seems to say, eat me. I'm so shiny and smooth. But at the same time, it says, don't touch me, I'm deadly. I'll get in your eyes and your throat. But anyway, I also liked it because I knew it could be done easily in After Effects. So let's get started with the tutorial. So I went ahead and tried it um, just like 30 minutes ago. And uh, this is what I made. Um, or I've been working on this all week. And I want you to think that I just whipped this up so that you'd think I was much smarter than I am, which, which would be so sad. And who would do that? Not me. Uh, that would, that would. So to get started, I'm going to create a pre-comp. We'll go to New Composition and make it HD. And we'll call this Text Pre-comp. And all that's going to be in here is our text. And we'll use this pre-comp several times. And if you ever want to just change the text, you can just come in here and just edit it once. So I'll, I'll get my text tool and I'm going to type in something really cool and amazing. I like creation effects. And uh, it doesn't matter what font, whatever you want. And let's add a gradient ramp effect to this. And uh, we'll drag the crosshairs to the top and the bottom of the text. And uh, we'll change the colors. And actually, I, I took a screenshot of Apple's version just so we can see, uh, have a reference for what the glitter looks like and the colors and all that. Um, I should probably get rid of this, right? I'm not associated with Apple. They're not paying me to do this, although maybe they should. Ta-da! Okay, back on my text layer. So now I can just uh, sample these colors. I'll sample um, one of these colors for the top. And then for the bottom color, um, I'll just sample the first color and then make it darker. So we got a little bit of a gradient going on. Okay, also note that the uh, the edges here are kind of rough. They're not perfectly smooth. And we can do that with a roughen edges effect. And we'll scale it way down to maybe like 20 and uh, crank up the edge sharpness and decrease the border, which is the amount of roughness. I think that's good. And that's all we need for this comp. I'll delete this. Okay, we'll close that. I'll close that too. All right, so here's our text pre-comp and we can just drag that into the new composition icon to put it in a new comp. And uh, let's make this text covered in titanium glitter. So we can do that with a fractal noise effect. And let's scale it way down to maybe two. And I'll increase the contrast to about 250. And so that we can see the colors underneath it, I'm going to set the blending mode to overlay. Maybe decrease the brightness a little bit. Negative 10. Okay, and uh, we're going to add one more level of, of glitter on here. Just some really bright sparkles just here and there. Not everywhere, but kind of spread out. So I'll duplicate that fractal noise. And uh, for this one, here, I'll hide the other one so we can just see our new texture. And uh, I'll put the contrast at about 500 and turn down the brightness to negative 100. And for this one, we can make the, uh, the blending mode add. And something I forgot to do was to make the, uh, the glitter move and change shape. If we look at this, you can see it's constantly dancing and moving. So let's do that. We can do that with the, uh, the evolution of our fractal noise, this property here, and uh, we can do it with an expression. You could keyframe it, but this is easier. I'll just alt click that stopwatch icon and we'll type in time times 100. If you want to try a different speed, you can enter a different value there. But what this will do is just add a value of 100 to our evolution every second that goes by when we play it. 
And uh, actually we can just copy this property and paste it to our first fractal noise. So now it's on both. Let's see what that looks like. And I'm gonna bring in that image again. So you can kind of see uh, a, a bit of a 3D quality to this text. You got some highlight areas on the right upper right side and then the other side is more shadowy. So to create that, I'm gonna add a bevel alpha effect. And I'll match the light angle so that the light is coming from the upper right. And uh, this one can be small. It'll just highlight the very edge. And uh, then we'll duplicate it. And this one can be nice and big. Put it at 15 or so. And that's more intense than we need it, so we can bring down the light intensity to 0.1 or so. All right, we're done with the first part. Now we can start prepping this text for the particles. So let me show you something with that original animation. Notice how there are more particles coming from these horizontal bars. Like there's a lot coming from the T here and the, the tops of the letters more so than these vertical sections, like the, the stems. I don't know what you call that. And the way that the particles will work, um, the bigger the area of text, the more particles can come off from it. So to recreate that look, we can make some quick modifications to this to get some fat areas and some skinny areas. Um, what I'm gonna do is, this is our original text precomp. I'm just gonna duplicate that. We can call this thin and fat areas because it's a great title. And uh, we'll just duplicate this layer. One will be the fat, one will be the thin. We'll just focus on the fat for now. And I can use my rectangle tool to just mask out uh, the horizontal parts of our text. And I'll unhide the other layer so we can see it. Um, actually, I think we can just do one long rectangle like this. Okay, we'll hide that layer. And for the skinny text, uh, we can add a, a choker, a simple choker, and turn that up until everything gets skinny. So here it is with the fat text. And that looks really funky, but we don't need to worry about it because uh, the particles will make the text disappear anyway. All we need are some opaque areas, non-transparent areas, to tell After Effects where the particles should be coming from. All right, I'll close that and um, we'll bring in that pre-comp into our final comp. We can call this final comp. And uh, we'll move it above our original glitter text because we wanna see the particles in front of the text. And that looks really ugly. I'm gonna turn that off because it's I don't wanna look at it. Okay, to add particles for this, we need the uh, CC Particle Systems 2 effect. And if we play that back, we just get this fountain of ugliness. So we're gonna need to make a lot of changes to this. So let's get to work. Uh, the first thing we can do, I'll open up these sections that we're gonna be using. Instead of uh, exploding like a firework, let's change this to Direction Normalized. This will let us spray the particles in just one direction. They're still uh, all spread out though, and that's the extra property, so we can bring that down maybe 0 0.1. And uh, they're shooting up right now, but we want them to go to the right. So we can change the direction to 90 degrees. And we don't want them to fall, so we can turn off gravity, set it to zero. And we don't want the this, these lines that's the particle type. We can switch this. Um, you can experiment. Uh, faded sphere might be good. I'll do a, a shaded sphere. And they're way too big, so let's turn it down. Birth size can be about 0 0.02. And the death size can be even smaller, 0 0.01. Maybe I'll make that a little bigger because I'm, I'm worried you won't be able to see it. Okay, they're going way too fast. That's the velocity property. And we can change that to maybe 0 
and uh, we don't want them to fade out too quickly. I think about five seconds would be good. Just change longevity to five. Okay, and they're still going fast, which is good for the very beginning, but we want them to kind of explode off the letters fairly quickly, but then slow down. And you can do that with the resistance property. I'll put this at about 25. It's probably too much. Okay, uh, maybe now we can turn on our text. And we can change the color of these now <clears throat> by sampling what we have here. We probably want something brighter for the birth color. And for the death color, maybe just sample that birth color, but make it darker so it fades out a little bit as the particle dies. All right, so they're all exploding from a single point. Um, this is the producer. And you can see right now it's just three by three. I don't think that's pixels, but it's, it's a small area. We need to make the producer big enough to cover our text. So we can increase the radius X and the radius Y. Better to go too big than too small. And another very important setting is this source alpha inheritance. And what this does, it'll make it so that particles can't be made over any transparent area. They can only be made <clears throat> over your text, which is why there's gonna be more particles being made on those fat areas. All right, and we need to increase the birth rate by quite a bit. We'll try about 400. Okay, it's getting there, but there's still a lot of work to do. First of all, we, we want there to be more particles in the first second, and then they need to decrease by quite a bit. And also they need to slow down by quite a bit. Let's take another look. Okay, so to decrease the number of particles, we need a, uh, some keyframes on the birth rate. I'll hit the U key to reveal that keyframe. And I'll just go forward about a second. And I'm not sure what I did, but let's try maybe five. And I think it would also help to slow these down. So remember, that's the velocity. So we'll start it at 0 0.4. And we'll go forward about a second and we'll make this slow down to 0 0.2. And I think we can also decrease the uh, resistance as well. So maybe keyframe it at 20 and then go forward a second or so and go to maybe 10. Now it doesn't look random enough for me. So what I usually do uh, with my particle effects is I add a bunch of wiggle expressions to them. And I know what you're thinking, big deal, everyone I know adds wiggle expressions to particle effects. But I did it first. So let's uh, see how we do that. We can add it to velocity. And uh, we'll just say wiggle, maybe five times a second. We'll wiggle this value about two thirds of whatever the value is set to. So maybe 0 0.15. And then we'll just copy that expression and uh, we'll put it on resistance. And we'll make this value eight. Direction, we'll just make this like two. Oh, birth rate would be a good one to do that. We'll make it an amount of five. No, let's go nuts. We'll do 10. All right, let's see what we got. It's okay. We're going to keep going. Um, this won't take long, but let's add some turbulent displace. And that's going to warp it. Warp it good. Sorry. If you increase the amount, it's hard to see because it's going low res, but uh, you can see it adds a wavy turbulence to it. You can maybe decrease the size and decrease the amount to maybe 30, 35. Okay, and I'm going to put a, an expression on here real quick. Simple expression on this random seed. I'll alt-click that 
and I'll just type in index. Index is this number, the layer number. So now when we duplicate this layer, each one will have a different random seed, and it'll give it more randomness. Um, and one other thing we can do is move the turbulence to the right with the particles, and that is the offset turbulence property here. Alt-click that. Did we put an expression on extra? I guess not. We should. What was I thinking? I'll just do a wiggle 5, another point 0.1. Makes no difference. All right, let's just, um, we'll duplicate this layer now. That'll give us some variation in our particles, especially with that turbulent displace. That's going to be, oh, and I almost forgot. We need a an expression on this evolution to change the warping. Time times 70? I don't know. Let's try that. Okay, so now when we duplicate this, not only will it add more particles, but it'll add some depth because you've got particles going in different directions. Um, it should be pretty subtle, but uh, I think it'll, it'll help. We could also change uh, the time that some of these start. All right, here's what we have now. And there is one more thing I want to do to the particles. That's make them uh, glimmer, shimmer, whatever you want to call it. Because these are all kind of staying the same. And in the original animation, uh, they sparkle. So we can do that with another fractal noise effect. If we want to see the, the texture, we can just hide these other effects and we can see it a little bit. Uh, let's increase the contrast to maybe 300, 400. And we'll do our evolution trick time times. I always do 100, so this time I'm going to do 101 just to shake things up. And then also um, transform. We want the uh, texture to kind of move with the particles. And you know what? I don't think that's going to be a good speed for our evolution. Let's make this 200. And the offset turbulence, uh, we could just pick whip this to our um, turbulent displace. So we'll pick whip the fractal noise offset turbulence to the offset turbulence of our turbulent displace effect. So it'll just move with that. Okay, we probably want it to be smaller than that. Maybe size 20. Good enough. And we'll just copy that effect and put it on our other layer. Oh, and uh, we need to change the blending mode. We can do overlay. Be sure to unhide those effects. So now if you look closely, you can see those particles are sparkling. And I think we're done. That wasn't too bad, right? Um, I did another tutorial kind of like this one. It was a dust reveal effect. So if, if you just love these particle text effects and you can't get enough, you can check that one out too. Or I created a, a, a template called Creation Title Effects. And that dust reveal effect is just one title of 200 that I included. So 200 different animated titles that cover a, a huge range of different themes. And you can just click on the text with your text tool and edit it using whatever font you want. So a really handy tool for video editors or anyone who uses After Effects. Or if you, uh, if you just like free stuff, I've got plenty of that too. Go to creationeffects.com. You've got lots of free animation presets like Heat Haze and uh, 3D fog, um, there's free lens flare effects, um, rainbows, lots of nature stuff. I like nature effects. Um, I did one called Landscaper. It lets you create any kind of 3D landscape that you want, whether it's beaches or jungles or deserts, winter landscapes, you name it. It's got tons of nature effects included, um, makes it really easy, and you can just drop in your 3D title and render out a really cool scene. 
Anyway, there's plenty of cool stuff to look at over there, uh, enough to, to waste your morning away, and who doesn't like to do that? So that's it. I hope you like the effect, and I'll see you at the next tutorial.